Hi guys, here's your video on section 9.3, Geometric Sequences and Series. So 9.2 is looking at arithmetic sequences and series, 9.3 is looking at geometric sequences and series. So after you're done watching this video, you should be able to find the terms of a geometric sequence and evaluate a geometric series. So we talked about arithmetic sequences and series where you were adding um, to find next terms. Geometric sequences is a sequence when there is a common ratio, which is found by multiplication. So anytime you're adding and subtracting for a sequence, it's arithmetic. If you are multiplying, it is geometric. Um, so the thing that you're multiplying by is called the common ratio. Here is how you find the common ratio. You basically take the second term divided by the first term. And there is a formula for the geometric sequence that's this right here. Okay, so for the example, the first three terms of a sequence are 2, negative 8, and 32. Find the next three terms and find the nth term and the fifth term. So my first term is 2, my second term is negative 8. So I need to figure out what the pattern is, what it is that I'm multiplying by. Now this one looks pretty straightforward. You're multiplying by negative 4, but let's say it wasn't as crystal clear. Um, to find my common ratio, I can take my second term divided by my first term, which gives you that negative 4. So I have my r and I have my first term. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, find the nth term of this sequence. So I can write the formula. So I have my an equals my first term, which is 2. Common ratio is 4 to the n minus 1. So that's this part of finding the nth term. So we're done with that. Oh, I forgot to find the next three terms. So let's go ahead and find the next three terms so we can answer that first question. So I'm going to go ahead and take 32 times negative 4. So that's negative 128 times negative 4 is 512 times negative 4 is negative 2048. So that represents the next three terms. So now I've answered that question. And then to find the fifth term, since I already have the formula for the geometric sequence, I can go ahead and just plug in 5 for n. Now really you could just continue the sequence since we already have the first three terms. Um, we already know the fifth term actually. But let's say I asked you to find the tenth term and we didn't already have the terms, we would just want to plug in the number. So let's just go ahead and plug in the number. So I have a10 equals 2 times negative 4. Why did I do 10? That's supposed to be a 5. Because I'm trying to find the fifth term. So I have a5 equals 2 times negative 4 to the 5 minus 1. So 2 times negative 4 to the fourth power is 512 which, like I said, we already had, um, but just in case we didn't, and you were trying to find like the 15th term, you would want to use the formula for the sequence. All right. Um, for the second example, it's finding all the possible values of r. If I know my third term is 4, and my seventh term is 1 fourth. So what I don't know is I don't know my first term, and I don't know my common ratio. Um, but what I can do is I can still use the formula for the sequence. So I have a n equals r. Sorry, that's a1 times r to the n minus 1. So for my third term, um, my third term is found by plugging in 3 for n. So my third term is 4. So I have 4 equals... My first term, which I don't actually know. My common ratio, which I don't know either, but I do know what n is, n is 3. So what I have is 4 equals a1 times r squared. Now I can do the same thing with my seventh term. So my seventh term is 1 fourth. Still don't know my first term. Still don't know my ratio. But for my seventh term, n is 7. So I have 7 minus 1. So I have 1 fourth equals a1 and then r to the sixth. 
Now what we have going on right here is a system. So we can go ahead and solve the system of equations. This first equation I'm going to go ahead and solve for my first term. So I get a1 equals 4 over r squared. And then what I can do is I can do substitution. And I can substitute my first term into my second equation. So now if you look at my equation, I have them all in terms of r. So r to the sixth over r squared is r to the fourth. So I have one fourth equals 4 times r to the 4th. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 4. I'm taking 1 fourth and dividing it by 4. That gives me 1 16th. And then I'm going to take the 4th root of 1 16th. Now to do the 4th root on the calculator, you're going to type in the 4 first and then hit math, and it's option number five. So I'm taking the fourth root of 1 16th, which is plus or minus 1 half. So all the possible values for r are positive 1 half or negative 1 half. And the reason why this one has a plus or minus is because if you look at the index of your radical, um, since your index is even, so you're taking the fourth root, um, you're going to have a plus or minus in front of your answer. It's just like when you take the square root, you have a plus or minus. Fourth root, you have a plus or minus. If your index is odd, like you took the cube root, then there is no plus or minus. It's just whatever that number is. So there are your possible values for R. For a geometric series, so a series again is taking the terms of your sequence and adding them all together. There is a formula for the geometric series. I personally don't use it very often. Um, instead, especially with the summation notation, this right here, I just plug it right into the calculator. Um, but you do have a formula for an infinite geometric series and that formula we, we will use. So for letter A, <coughs> For letter A, you can go ahead and just plug that right into the calculator. Again, the shortcut is alpha window, and it's option number two. Uh, so I have k equals eight up to 14. And just make sure that three to the k minus seven is, in is inside the entire parentheses on the calculator. You just plug it in, and it gives you 3,279. You don't really have to worry about doing that by hand. Now this first one is a finite geometric series uh, because you're starting with plugging in 8 and you're ending at 14. If you look at B and C, you're adding these first four terms together, but then you see this dot, dot, dot. That means the pattern continues. So what we have instead of a regular geometric series is we have an infinite geometric series, which is the second formula over here. So to be able to use this formula, you need to know two things. You need to know your first term and your common ratio. But for infinite geometric series, your common ratio has to be between negative 1 and 1. That's what this is saying. Absolute value of r is between 1, absolute value of r is less than 1. So what that means, and other, another way to say that is your r has to be between negative 1 and 1. So the first thing you need to do is actually find your r. So your common ratio you find by taking your second term divided by your first term. So I have negative 100 divided by 250. That gives me negative 2 fifths. Is negative 2 fifths between negative 1 and positive 1? It sure is, which means I can go ahead and find the sum of this infinite geometric series. So using the formula, I have s equals my first term, which is 250, over 1 minus my ratio. I'm going to go ahead and take that and plug it into the calculator. Which gives me 
twelve fifty over seven. So what makes an infinite geometric series cool is the fact that you are adding an infinite amount of numbers and it actually comes out to a real number. You would think that if you're adding um, an infinite amount of numbers together, it would give you infinity. But in some cases it doesn't, and that's because of this stipulation right here, that your common ratio has to be between negative 1 and 1. So if we look at letter C, and I find my common ratio. Um, I'm taking my second term divided by my first term. So when I take 2 and divide it by 1 half, that gives me 4. Is 4 between negative 1 and 1? No, it's not. So for this one, the sum does not exist. Well, the sum does exist, but the sum is um, infinity. So for the infinite geometric series, I guess we can just write not possible. And the reason why that is is because if you look at your terms, your terms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when I take a bigger number and add it to an even bigger number, it's going to give you another bigger number. So the sum doesn't actually um, reach a limit like it does for letter B. Alright, so those are all of your notes for section 9.3.